Hello everyone, this is Southern Hellenic. I am back with another video. So in today's video, let me make sure that I got my uh, my thing. So uh, this morning I did the video um, about what I have learned making um, my prayer beads because um, the whole point of the Paltheist market was is to offer a wide range of goods to um, people that practice polytheistic religions. I know I have some like Wiccan Sabbath or Sabbath ones. Um, I don't really um, view the Sabbaths as the sole property of Wicca. Uh, there's Druids that do in fact observe it. I know there are uh, some Hellenics that also observe it. So it's not owned by one religion. So the polytheist market is supposed to be a place where I put up items for people that practice polytheistic religions. Um, and, you know, you come and you buy my goods. And I know some people are pretty upset about the fact that I don't do free shipping um, anymore. Um, I will probably bring that back, uh, you know, but uh, I don't know when I'll do that. I just, I just have to be... Um, you know, realistic on, you know, on how expensive, because I remember one item I sent out to California was over $15 for shipping. So I absolutely made nothing off of the item uh, because of how much shipping that I had to, um, I had to spend. So it null and voided my entire profit. But as I said in my original uh, video, uh, I don't, uh, I don't do this to make money. I just am, was just shocked at like how expensive it was to ship it to California. So, but yeah, but I, I do have the items items finished. So as soon as you buy it off of me, I'll ship it out. Uh, ship it out, especially if I have to close. I will be in the area and I'll ship your item out. But anyways, getting away from that. Um, so. Um, one of the reasons that I wanted to offer um, prayer beads to uh, in my shop was that prayer beads have become something that a lot of people use in their practice. Um, especially if you live in a family that doesn't support your pagan path, you can have prayer beads and still offer your prayers to the gods and all that but just not in a way that they would um, would recognize. And so it's just an easy way to keep your practice undercover and everything. So um, the prayer beads I'm going to show you, these are ones that are going to be available the first of next month. I would, um, I would go and offer them before the end of the month, but unfortunately I've got, I think, four more items that they have to take money off for. So even though it's going to be 20 cents per listing, I kind of want to limit it to the 60 cents that they're going to be taking out. But anyways, um, but yeah, so my Zeus seven day candles will be available on the first, though my shop is going on vacation until the 10th because I'm going to be out of town for seven days from the 2nd until the 8th. I've got a doctor's appointment the 9th, so I'm going to reopen on the 10th. So, yeah, but I'm still, I still discovered I can still put, uh, I can still put the items on there, and, and that way when I reopen the shop, boom, it'll be there. So, it'll be the Zeus 7-Day Candles, the Zeus, uh, uh, I would say, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just over my hair. Uh, the Zeus 70 candles, the Zeus um, medium sized candles, and of course these babies. So, so this is the this is my Zeus prayer um, prayer beads. Um, you saw me using them in the video that I was doing. Uh, speaking of video ritual videos, um, I will be able to do one. Um, to bed. No, I'll be able to do two because I close Wednesday, but um, with how my pain is 
receding and I'm able to get a good night's sleep or feel like I got a good night's sleep, I will definitely be able to do both of them. And um, I will actually do a video. I'm going to do a video today, but it won't be uploaded until tomorrow. And that is going to cover both of those holidays in one video. So, um, you know, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay, so this is it. This is, this is my Zeus prayer beats. Um, only the Greek ones, or yeah, the Greek ones, are going to have this key on there. So I was over at uh, Michael's. I like going to Michael's. I mean, don't wrong. I love Hobby Lobby. Uh, they definitely do. They definitely do have a lot more beads than Michael's does. But I saw these beads, and I thought they were really pretty. The only downside to them was they were Dickens of Time trying to thread because they were purple and glittery. I, I just loved them, but Dickens of Time trying to get them threaded. Also. Um, the the main bead. Okay, look like it glued. Oh wow, my, my my key glued, right here. That big one. Uh, that is your starter bead. Um, yeah, but my it glued. Oh, well, I'm not gonna bother with it. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm gonna definitely keep this one for myself. But um, I'll have to check the other ones and see if they glued. Uh, that that's uh, I use this. If anyone wants to know what stuff I use, I use Quick Grip, and you can tell I've used a lot of it. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, so I was looking at the prayer beads that uh, the one I generally go with had, and I noticed that it wasn't the chained one, and noticed it was like this right here. So I decided to buy buy a uh, package of them, and I just find that that. Hey, yeah, that works a whole lot better. But um, it has the eagle for Zeus. Um, it took me like an hour looking through all these different charms to finally find my eagle. And then I ended up ordering more eagles from Amazon. But, um, yeah. So, those are really nice. And um, the other eagle that I got with it is what's going to be on the candles and also on the other... Uh, prayer beads. So one of the things that I have learned by making these is um, it's just the calmness of making the item, of allowing your um, allowing your stresses to go away as you're beading, as you're putting these beads in their place. And I also feel like as I'm doing these beads, that I'm doing this, you know, ultimate form of devotional work. And yes, my candles are beautiful, and I really enjoy making them a lot. Um, my Zeus candles, both the medium and the seven-day ones, I actually worked them. I worked on them the first week of this month because of the nonsense that happened with my LGBTQ AI. Uh, candles, the asexual ones, the bisexual ones, and especially the gay, especially the gay pride ones, which when you buy them, they look like they're solid white, but I did put glitter um, on each of the levels. A couple of them I didn't realize they were the wrong color, so if you kind of complain, oh, it's the wrong color, um, I'm like, yeah, unfortunately my lighting in my hallway sucks. <laughs> it's just, it sucks. Um, but next year when I make a new batch, um, I will actually have them colored because now I know what color, I know what company to go with for my color. So, yeah, that's, that's the thing. Um, but it's, it's kind of this, it's just kind of like sitting there and just threading this and just kind of forgetting, Forgetting all your troubles and all of your stresses, because I have been through a lot of stress, especially with my uh, with what I might have, um, not knowing what I had, no no understanding why was my joint skin stiff, all this stuff, and then I'm reading up on it and I'm seeing that the 
first sign of it is fatigue. And knowing that for 15, 16, 17, 18 years, whatever number you want to go with, I have been having this perpetual state of being tired all the time and not understanding why this was happening to me. You know, am I, is my diet wrong? Is this a byproduct of me being poor and not being able to eat the foods that I need to eat to keep myself balanced? And then thinking, you know, I got this health insurance. My, you know, my, my, you know, my hands are, you know, giving me problems. Maybe I need to go and finally get my, finally get looked at and see what the heck is going on with my body. So just, you know, doing what I need to do to take better care of myself. But having that stress in my life, you know, having it at work and having it and when I wake up, my joints are stiff, they hurt. Um, it just it just added to like my anxieties and my worries about everything. So these prayer beads that I've been making, especially for uh, I'm especially for uh, Zeus, the next one I'm doing is for Athena. I am going to get back to doing the one for um, Apollo because uh, those were the ones I had originally started working on before I had to redo the whole thing. But I really, I really um, felt that just things were not going the way that, you know, you know, they weren't, my life was not going the way that I wanted. And these prayer beads, making these prayer beads has been a wonderful thing to do. It's been a wonderful project to do. I look forward to releasing them and including the edifice on one side and the prayer to the on the other and just you know and just taking joy in something that I really love doing and you know and everything but you know it's it is just it's it's one of those things you know you sit there and you it's not like candles that you just boil um, wax and you pour it in a container and you add your color it's very different from that and it's something that um, it's something that I I really just sit there and just slowly do this and slowly just forget about everything and it's just you know it's it's just something and then when I'm done with it I put it on the altar and I present it to the gods and say this is my piece of devotional work to you and and I leave it on there for a while and then they go, then I will snip the excess cord, wrap it in a little colorful bag and put it inside of my uh, cabinet so that when you order it, I can grab it and I can mail it off to you. But I present it as an offering. I don't just stuff in a bag and put it in the, into the cabinet. I actually put it before the gods and say to whatever god that this is dedicated to, this is my devotional offering to you um, and everything. So it, it, it becomes a form of an offering and um, I actually am going to be leaving one of them on my altar uh, as a, a votive offering and I will be using it because a lot of your devotional offerings ended up being used in, um, in battle. So, but uh, it's, um, you know, it's, you know, it's just some. It's just something I want to keep on the altar, and have it as a piece of devotional offering, devotional work, devotional art, and all that type of wonderful stuff. But um, oh, uh, another uh, another thing that I have learned in this is uh, is it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes and to come to the conclusion that give it time, you will be as good as everyone else that makes the same exact thing. Um, but uh, it's okay, to, like I said, it's okay to make mistakes, it's okay this, it's okay that. And it's something that I had to learn. And I'm really, really happy with how everything has turned out 
And my brother, of course, loves them. He thinks they're really nice. And he's like, yeah, that's just something that's come from your heart and, and a place of reverence and respect and all that. So those are the lessons I've learned from making my devotional um, bracelets. Um, I am going to... Um, what is it? I am going to be going and making... Um, another bracelet but this is not going to be for uh, I might I might go ahead and release them uh, this is for like the 12 Olympians um, there's actually a um, there's actually a, a book on the hymns to, to Olympus um, I am not going to copy off of that one um, but that's going to be some time away I just want to complete uh, my I want to make uh after i do after i remake my apollo ones and my athena ones uh to start on my ikati ones and also i did get blood red um beads for the morgan um but i i gotta go to hobby lobby when i get back from vacation um or i may just go ahead and go there on the first and i need to pick up some more muted um red i'm gonna get uh actually get two really bright red and one muted red and that's gonna be for uh thor and loki and this is for people that might be interested in norse prayer beads um but i am not going to be making them until i get some more thor's hammers and all that jazz so once i get those then i'll be making them and um, i'm also going to get some pearls for uh, for Frigg and all that. So those are the things that I have planned to do during the summer. And I also do plan to start on doing my comedic ones as well. Like I said, this is stuff I'm doing during the summer. Uh, and uh, it's going to be really interesting to make it and everything. Um, but yeah. So I'm going to see you guys around. Uh, oh, uh, before I do leave, I want to say I did look it up. And the uh, Homer Kims is one of the is one of one of the oldest forms of Greek literature. I did not Google about the uh, the Orphic Hymns, but when I do when I do uh, do that, um, I will probably incorporate it into my video about women's rights in ancient Greece because I'm redoing that video because as I said in the ritual video, I did. I did forget the lovely ladies of Sparta, and I'm truly sorry about that. Lovely ladies of Sparta who are dead and gone, I'm sorry I did not include you. So um, I will see you guys around. So until next time, may the gods watch over you and bless you, especially during this time. So until then, bye.